I'll step out of the devil's advocate role for a moment uh, just to clarify. I mean, I, I think that the criminal uh, offending behavior of a minority, and this must be emphasized, of a minority of the residents of communities of high crime districts where homicides are happening in St. Louis or in Baltimore and Philadelphia, Chicago, uh, where the, the uh, carjackings and uh, other uh, felony uh, property crimes are, are taking place. Um, the, the disproportionate rate of offending of a relatively small number of uh, social uh, uh, misfits, making life miserable for everybody else who has to live there, is the core issue. Um, and this is something that people just don't want to face uh, because it is daunting. It is not at all clear what to do. Uh, it, you know, programs, we should have more programs. People can't demonstrate any reliable interventions that are having a significant effect on, uh, on this behavior. They say it's due to poverty. Not all poor communities ex exhibit behavior to the same extent. You say culture can't be talked about it. It's obvious that any common sense meaning of the word culture is implicated to some degree in these patterns of behavior that we're seeing in these communities. How could this, I mean, don't, don't take me for a fool. I, I can see how people are living. I can see the out of wedlock birth rate in the father absence. I, I can see the gang activity. I can see the violence. What does it take to actually shoot somebody to death as an act? You think anybody can do that? Anybody can just take a gun and shoot somebody? There are inhibitions. There, there are psychological and in, in emotional blocks that keep us an ethical, an ethical block. Indeed, internalized ethics. So yeah, man. Um, this guy's trying to figure out <laughs> why so many sun teens, man, can shoot people to death in the streets. This is this is How, a, this is an what? American thing as much as a, as a black thing because with carjacking is virtually unknown here. I, I don't, I, I I can't remember hearing one. Uh, and you have literally hundreds in Chicago alone. Right, but you have stabbings. You guys have a lot of stabbings. Yeah, but not, nothing like as many sh shooting. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because you don't have guns on the street like that. If you did have oh. guns on the street, you'd have shootings all the time. There are shootings here, yeah, but I mean, they, they say that the, it, a lot of this is an Amer American thing, not just a black thing. You know, it's, it's just. So you uh, think it's an American thing and it's not a black thing? Well, you, you, I, 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 I am a race realist. You know, I, I've been for de for decades. There, there are, you know, race is a real thing, but you see this as the problem. This isn't the problem. This is the this is a symptom. Of what's happening, uh, the Dem largely the Democrats, you know, they use same policies. And if you incentivize this sort of thing, it's mass mass shoplifting and stuff like that. You, you get the criminal elements there. Mm. Do you think that? So you you think that um, shooting someone dead in the street, like? Gunning them down. Do you think that's a? You think that that would happen at a high rate in a glider-controlled area where there was full of democratic policies? Uh, no, I, I think if you had proper policies, there would be less shooting by blacks. So uh, you're saying that if the if if the policies changed, you would see a market decrease in the public shooting to death by black people. I think so. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't always like this. It wasn't always this bad. But what? But but what would stop it? Would it be stopped because of they would be prevented from doing it? Because I think what you're missing is that. You're saying that white people aren't preventing them from doing this. 
No, I'm, I'm saying that the, the policies that you've got in, in especially de Democrat states, it, it, it does, it's, it's, are not preventing them from doing it. It, it, it gives it gives way to criminality. I mean, you got you got large criminal elements there. It's not it's not all blacks. Something you said a while no. back. Something you said a no while back. No one's that it's all. No one's saying that it's all black. That's that's not the argument, Alexander Barron. What we're saying is that when it happens, it's usually a black person. No yeah. one's saying. No one's saying it's all blacks. Well, so don't, you, don't conflate that. So you said a while back, you, you were angry with a guy. You said you, you you felt like shooting or bashing or something, but you didn't. But you you, you know that because you you can control your inhibitions. You know. No, I didn't. I didn't because. Listen, man. Listen, man. It. <laughs> Let me put it like this. <clears throat> it, it's not that I could control my inhibitions. It's that it just didn't happen. Like the scenario, it didn't happen. Most of us you have these, <laughs> yeah, my, my, most of us have these, these inhibitions, these fears at times. You know, the plenty of times I wanted to kill someone. Uh, I'm yeah. sure, sure off the people down my road have. Uh, but yeah, but I'm, I'm more talking about what he's talking about shooting people <clears throat> dead in the street. I'm not talking about poisoning somebody, you know what I'm saying, or yeah. fucking killing your spouse in a fit of rage in the bedroom. What, what I'm talking about is shooting people dead in the streets. Yeah, this is insane. The meaning of the word culture is implicated to some degree in these patterns of behavior that we're seeing in these communities. How could this, I mean, don't, don't take me for a fool. I, I can see how people are living. I can see the out-of-wedlock birth rate in the father absence. I, I can see the gang activity. I can see the violence. What does it take to actually shoot somebody to death as an act? You think anybody can do that? Anybody can just take a gun and shoot somebody? They, there are inhibitions. There, there are psychological and in, in emotional blocks that keep us... And ethical, and ethical blocks. Indeed, internalized ethical commitments uh, of what kind of person am I and how shall I live in the world? What do I think of myself? How can I be accountable to the people who I love, to whom I look for uh, affirmation and for their respect if I behave in this way or that? To dismiss that, to say that that's not at all relevant, to say that everything is driven by unemployment rates uh, is is uh, offensive to, to common sense and I think also inconsistent with a serious engagement with the evidence. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I don't know, maybe there's not even a but here. Um, can you talk to us a little bit, because you've actually been looking at the numbers and some of it is reflected in your uh, recent piece in City Journal about exactly what has happened in terms of criminal offending uh, in American cities over the last uh, couple of years? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I also wanted to address some of the, uh, the cultural arguments uh, that you just laid out. Um, I think well, one Look point at the pain he's experiencing. Body language is, is subtle. Look at the pain he begins to experience when he knows he has to actually talk about the crime in these cities. Watch this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I also wanted to address some of the... Because uh, the <laughs> he knows that, like, yo, I got to talk about this. And... I got to speak about crime, which is thus speaking about black people, which is thus speaking about black people committing crime, which it opens up so much, so many things that he knows that like, ah, fuck. Even though he came on the show to talk about it with a black dude who's not like woke, it's still painful to have to talk about it because of all the potential booby traps and shit that um, he's going through. 
all the potential booby traps and landmines. Uh, the cultural arguments uh, that you just laid out. Um, I think well, one point to make here, um, the, the connection between poverty and the violence is less obvious and clear and significant than one might think. That, that is one thing that I've learned over the past couple of years in uh, reading and researching this issue. I mean, you, this is a taboo realm of, of research, by the way, as many academics have tested to. But it, you, can, you can control for economic status, as some studies have done, and you, and you look at, uh, you know, you look at, for example, low income Asian communities, very low income Asian uh, communities, where there's lots of unemployment, many issues, like lots of immigrants coming in who barely speak the language and aren't able to access various resources. You, you, know, you compare low income Asian communities with, with higher income black communities and the, the difference in crime, uh, so sorry, the, the crime rates are far higher in the black communities compared to the low income Asian communities. Okay, so the, he studied this and he said it's taboo for academics to study this. It's taboo because you don't want to touch this topic. Well, well Lowry, Lowry's covered it quite a lot. And him and him, McWhorter. Yeah, but, 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 but I'm talking about, but they brought this guy in. He's actually studied, he's, he's done the data. Like he studied the data in low income, very, very, very low income Asian communities versus high income black communities. The high income black community, the wealthy black community has far more crime than the low income, very low income poverty rate. Asian community. Well, violent crime with a capital V is committed primarily by males between the ages of about 15 and 45. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about all blacks. We're not, we're not talking about black women so much, are we? Well, here's the thing. Though. It's, if it's, it's not poverty, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm basically no, saying is that Sorry, Tony. Tony, drive, drive by shootings for that. Yeah, they're studying. They 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 studying the data, and they're learning that it's not poverty. No, and that's what we're told is one of the major th reasons for it. That it's poverty. Salute nice. to um Bipox Shakur, man. He said, "What's up, Ak? I had no clue Indianapolis was as sunny as it was. It's random. The reddest states have the these heavily sun cities." facts that's so true man um but it's not poverty and to study that and he says people who are studying that it's taboo amongst academics to actually study that because you'll find out that it's not poverty yeah yeah it's one of many taboos, isn't it? Yeah. What's up, Osa? Hey, what's up, gentlemen? How y'all feel? How's it going, man? Hey, um, uh, y'all can hear me? Yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. You know, um, it's difficult to, like, uh, factor in black women because uh, they're often the perpetuators. So they're calling men to kill other people and, and and things like that you can't even really factor that in but the propensity for violence i would argue is is close now the actual how and when and how who's doing it is is obviously going to be a lot more males but uh, the propensity is significantly high <laughs> but it but it would be hard to ever track that in my opinion mm -hmm. yeah you, you could never you could never, like somebody like him could never get the data on how many murders were actually the genesis of the feud or the genesis of the, the call that was made was an actual woman. You could never really get that. Right, like, yeah, like the joint in Chicago in the little carryout joint where the mom told the son to kill the Bama. 
You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that you can't, yeah, you can't study that. What? But go Sun Queens. Now why why is that? Now obviously this this doesn't need to be this need not have to be said, but because there are some crazy lunatic progressives who might, you know, think that I'm insinuating this nothing to do with genetics or any biological pre- predisposition. That is not in my mind at all. Okay. So he wants you to know he doesn't think it has anything to do with genetics. This this doesn't need to be. Isn't that what you just not explained? Head, but because there are some crazy lunatic progressives who might you know think that I'm insinuating this nothing to do with genetics or any biological pre- predisposition. That is not in my mind at all. Okay. Again, it doesn't need to be said, but I'm just saying it. Um, but obviously, you know, if, if economics doesn't explain it, if you have higher income black communities committing, ha- having higher rates of crime relative to Asian communities, then you, you've isolated the role of, of economic status, but you still have a higher rate of crime. So what, so what is the driving factor then? Is it fatherlessness? Is it culture? All those things matter. Um, so I, I, just, I just don't find the economic arguments to be convincing. I mean, there's also uh, uh, one study that uh, Barry Latzer, if you're familiar, the American criminologist. Are you familiar? Barry Latzer, yeah. He, he's, he's a uh, conservative criminologist. So he, he's uh, written about this at great length, about how in the 1990s and 80s, you had certain black immigrant groups, such as the, uh, black immigrants coming in from Haiti, who uh, were also uh, dealing with economic issues on top of language and cultural issues. And, and also had similar, if not higher rates of poverty relative to American born black communities, but yet their crime rates were significantly lower. This is, we're speaking the eighties or nineties, um, yet, yet their crime rates were lower. So, so in that case, you've even isolated uh, race. You've made that comment. Yeah. Oh, so can you, can you, can you talk about that? Yeah, wait, wait, I didn't understand what he said. Did, did, he, did said he said Haitians? Were black immigrants, he, 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 he used them as an example. But black immigrant populations that came to America were very, they're very poor, very poor people. And they were in, and in the areas where they, you know, consi- consolidate or they, where, they, where they gravitate to, the crime rate is significantly lower than African American areas. Yeah, I mean, that again, those things are hard to qualify as well. Cause I mean, like, a Haitian will chop you up into pieces and throw you into the river. Nobody's going into those neighborhoods to do a lot of police work. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know what I mean, make excuses, but like, I I don't know, man. Haiti's Haitians, island people are. Yeah, yeah, no, Jamaicans, yeah, yeah, yeah they Jamaicans. Notorious. Yeah, they notorious, man. Notorious. Yeah, they notorious. A lot of the weed spots that are that are in D.C. back in the day were run by Jamaicans. Yeah, Jamaicans, yeah. They used to have it on Smash. Uh they're they're a lot, they're pretty ruthless. Um I think they're a little yeah. bit more ruthless than African Americans. Sometimes it depends on what it is. But I mean the studies would show that. You know what I'm saying? Um because and then also too though, a lot of them are on oh, they're on edge because they can be deported. You know mm. what I'm saying? So they have a they'll they might tone it down. So I mean I, I could see how I can see how that that might those results might come like that. They might tone Their it down. Morality is external because you know with some people, they need external things to um, kind of like serve. They don't. We don't have like an inner morality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. So so yeah. So yeah, the deport, the threat of deportation and things like that will keep them in check in that first generation. I think that second generation, though, you get Zo Pound. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No, nah, they don't well, got no cut cards. Yeah, man. Let me get my wife some water. Hold it down for me, guys. All right. Um, yeah, so Alex, you were saying you're you live in uh, the UK, right? Yeah, London. South London. Oh yeah. Oh, so like like Brixton area and all that. No, uh, well, Sydney. It's near Crystal Palace. Oh, uh, okay. So, so yeah. I mean, I, 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 so what you were saying. Um, yeah, I think the availability of guns has more to do with the lack of gun violence. 
right? I think America, what makes America different, I mean, to your point, it is an American thing, but only because of the availability of guns. If the availability of guns was higher in the UK, I personally think you'd see a lot more gun violence. Well, there was a special unit, Operation Trident, set out to cover black crime, black gun crime in, in London. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I mean, I mean, there, there was a guy shot himself. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh really. He's trying to break into a car using a down the bottom of my road. You can find it on YouTube, Venner Road. Mm-hmm. He, he was trying to break into a car using a shotgun. He, he shot himself. <laughs> shot himself. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> was he a black guy? Yeah. Uh, but there'd be quite a few stabbings right there. But um, I, I, it's, it, there is a, a, a youth n- knife culture here. I mean, back in 1993, it was a black kid called Stephen Lawrence was stabbed to death by by a, a gang of whites. And I, I played the race thing all the time. Every, race, 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 race. But yeah, In 2008, there was a white kid named Ben Kinsella was stabbed by three blacks. And it's knife crime then. Yeah, uh, it's it's narratives, but I, I, my thing is it's just there is a large youth cut. I mean, you you can argue about the percentages, but the, there is a definite here. It's a, it's a it's a city thing. Certain cities, uh, not necessarily inner cities, but um, you've got a knife culture, and it's it's, it's just insane. Yeah, it's just insane. Do well, they have? That guy in Croydon was stabbed the other way, the other the, the other month for for stab, you know murder on a bus for for, for insane. Mm. And then this were these sun men doing this or no? Yeah, it was a black girl. It was oh. um, <laughs> and 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 then I forget her name, but uh, the, 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 I, I, I walked past the shrine in Croydon a bit for. Uh, there's been quite a few stabbings there. It's absolutely senseless stuff. That no. I mean, you don't stab a girl in the neck with a with a machete because she turns you down, do you? <laughs> nah, I <laughs> mean, seventeen years old. I mean, just sun men be doing that shit in America. I mean, they got guns though, so they shoot them. These women get shot, yo. I, I mean, seriously, these women are like, I've had, especially like in like in D.C. Like I've met women from like other areas, and they be like, man, they're scared to reject guys. Like they would just go ahead and just give them the number for fear of what these guys might. Do. <laughs> like it's crazy. So uh, do they have the do they have that broken down by race? The knife, the knife murders, or whatever. Um, well, I don't break them down so much, but if you look on the BBC website, they've got photographs of all the victims. There's a lot of black victims. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, mostly, it's mostly young. It's, it's, it's young people. It's young people. Yeah, I mean, in they're, America... They're, they're, they're doing the stabbing, and, and uh, they're being stabbed mostly. It's, 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 absolutely, it's insane. It really is insane. But you're not allowed to carry a knife here. You're not allowed, you know, can't carry anything here. I mean, right. If, if I if I carry a sharp pencil, <laughs> like right. I could do if it was a defensive weapon. It's insane. Yeah, and see, that's what I'm saying. Machetes. Yeah, I mean, they got a lot of Jamaicans in London, don't they? Um, some areas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a it's a, it's a, a Jamaica's a British colony, so it's a lot of Jamaicans. That's what they do, <laughs> machetes. <laughs> yeah. Um. And I mean, you know, I, that's why we need those. Like, I think we just need rules, man. We need to live under strict rules, external, external rules that don't work, man. All this like freedom and stuff. I mean, I'm all for it and I benefit for it and I love it and I appreciate it. However, it just don't work for everybody. I thought it's important about the birch or caning for it would do it may do a lot to. So I had six of the best when I was, when I was young. And it, it put me on the track. Where do they do? They do caning in the UK? They used to do that? No, no. They, they got, I was like 1948, I think. They got, oh. They yeah. continued in the Isle of Man for a bit longer. They used to use the birch in the Isle of Man. But uh, Singapore, they do it. And it's, they, 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 yeah, they, Singapore. They, they, Singapore is a country, though, where it's like you got a, a, a homogeneous country mm-hmm. canning would never work in western societies because western societies are not homogeneous yeah canning only works in homogeneous communities um salute to um deluxe 247 aka cal ripkin aka the real mvp coming through once again um 
listen, man. Canaan would only work in a homogeneous society where <laughs> right. it's the the, P, the caner and the caney both the same, look right? like cousins and shit. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. otherwise it'd be a disproportionate something, 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 something. Yeah. Constant. You have two black populations and yet uh, one has significantly higher crime rates. So you've eliminated race and economic status. So you're left with Either you know society is somehow distinguishing between immigrant uh, black individuals and non-immigrant black individuals, which is not plausible, or there are differences between populations, irrespective of race and economic class, that have to do with culture, have to do with family dynamics, and you know, fatherlessness is something that you've talked about at great length. High rates of fatherlessness that contribute to uh, inner city uh, dysfunction and crime. And so I, I just wanted to say yeah. that before I... I, I, I want to go question. I want to go back. I want to go back. You said uh, you disavowed that you're making any uh, assumption about genetic differences between Asian and African descended populations in calling attention to the fact that a lower economic strata Asian population had lower crime rates than a higher economic strata African American population. That happened. You're not saying it's genetics, it's culture. And here's what I want to say. Might it not be easier to take if it were genetic, it, if there were a genetic element, here's what I mean. Um, I'm not saying there is, I don't know, frankly. Uh, I don't know how you know that there's not. Uh, certainly populations that descend over many generations from relatively different uh, primordial uh, uh, stock could have evolved some differences in I don't know the glandular system and how uh, people deal with aggression or uh, the impulse control or whatever. I'm not saying it's true. I, I don't believe that it's true. I'm just saying it could be true. Um, and if, if indeed, I mean, because we're talking about relatively small numbers of people here, we, we, the people who are engaging in these violent criminal activities are. Uh, a, a minority of the population. They're outliers. They're behavioral outliers. Um, and uh, the way people react to stress, I mean, interaction between genetic and environmental factors that uh, could conceivably be implicated. I mean, we see a lot of different areas of human behavior have very sharply unequal representation of people from different um, uh, primordial population stocks. Um, of the look in the professional sports, for example, where you see a vast overrepresentation of African Americans, et cetera. I won't belabor the point. What I meant though was that might it not be easier to take in the sense that, you know, well, okay, there's an app for that. I mean, if, if indeed it's a question of uh, how much adrenaline is coming out in the response to a certain environmental stimuli, and I find that that is partly under good genetic control and it differs as between these populations, I'm not saying it's true. I don't know that it's true. I'm just saying something like that could be true. A, it maybe it's treatable. And B, it really does take the moral judgment onus off of the population that's on the short end of the comparison uh, because people can't really control that. Basically, what he's saying is that if you admit that it's genetic, which it is, then black people are off the hook because we act like this because of genes. If it was talking about men and women, there would be no, there would be no taboo about it. Well, they still they're starting that in America with the trans shit. But yeah, I get what you're saying oh, in general. Yeah. Time, yeah, But 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 not even to get off on that. But what's up, K? I I I like that. If if you say and, and make sure you hit the like button. Let's go for 300 likes, man. All it takes is everybody who has not yet hit the like button to now hit the like button. Very simple. Um, but yeah, if you say, if you admit that it's DNA, then, like he said, it's treatable. You can say, okay, well, black people, their stimuli or their ambula glotta or their stress glands send more this chemical to the brain when this happens. 
like they'll be told to leave somewhere. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's certain, so it, it, they're more prone to violence. So maybe you can give us a pill. Or maybe you can, you know what I'm saying, just say, hey, if a black person kills somebody because they were asked to leave somewhere, you can be like, hey, man, you know, like, shouldn't have asked them to leave because black people <laughs> kill you when they when you when you do shit like that. But even when other people won't kill you for that. Uh it, it perfectly exemplifies when you say the system isn't designed for this. Yeah. Like it's just not designed for the for the mindset from the DNA. Did you hear Jordi Jordi Groy's uh, I think that's how you pronounce the name Jordi Groy's uh, solution? She said <laughs> It's called post-traumatic slavery disorder. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. Had nothing to do with slavery. Only an academic can come up with that, and a feminist academic of that. Let's try to get 300 likes, guys. Everybody who hasn't hit the like button, please hit the like button. Um, so I just, uh, this is a, a meta comment. I'm, I'm not actually making a claim about genetics. I'm I'm talking about whether we should be willing to even consider that possibility in the range of explanations and about the ethics of doing so. And I'm trying to say that I think the ethics are ambiguous of doing so. I, I'm, it's not necessarily a racist act or an anti-Black act uh, to begin to entertain that kind of a possibility. Again, A, because it might point toward interventions <coughs> <coughs> that could be um, uh, you know, helpful in, in diminishing disparity, but also because it, it what's the alternative? See, the alternative is, look how they raise their children. Uh, look at the way they are. Look, how, look at what they believe. Have you listened to the rap music? Do you see the raunchiness of their culture? Do you see how they are? Uh, and that's very, very condemnatory. It's not genetic, it's cultural. Mm -hmm. Edgy, what's up? Yo, am I actually in? What's yeah, up? What's up, man? Oh, nothing much, man. Uh, long time lurker of your show. Just glad to be on. I, I saw that you had the StreamYard link in the description. So I was like, <laughs> I just finished my stream before I talk about similar things. So might as well. I had my setup here. Might as well pop on. But I, I don't want to. Uh, man, right wing shit, uh, mass immigration. I, I'm from Canada. So. We don't have black crime as much, but you know we're definitely really? getting taken over by. <laughs> I was That's thinking the same way. thing. No, yeah, in Toronto maybe, but it's much more uh, the fucking natives, especially in small towns or in you got, like. You got Trudeau, though. It's even worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In some ways, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. We're definitely getting taken over in other ways, though. Uh, the cost of living going way up of uh, housing like three four indian families to one house kind of hard to compete with that so but no i i, I like your uh, program and I, I i like how you scope out all the different uh cities and all the crazy shit that goes on there you guys get some of the best scoops over here wow. salute salute yeah, salute, salute, man. Um, cultural, but if there were um, uh, a, a vigorous argument of that sort to be made, it seems to me that it could be equally, uh, you know, diminishing of the of the status and and the 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 kind of reputation of a population. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, I, I don't think we should totally ignore. The, the possibility of these genetic differences, I, I just come at it from a perspective of ignorance and lack of knowledge. I, I, I just haven't spent a lot of time looking at this. And every time I do, I don't mean to put you this, on the spot. Excuse me, Robert. No, no, yeah, yeah, of course. No, 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 no. Yeah, I totally get it. But, um, and also every, every time I do look at this, uh, issue, which I have in the past, I come away thinking that you know, even if I were to formulate an opinion on this, uh, it, it just wouldn't be worth either way to make that opinion because of, we've said, I mean, the classic example is that Sam Harris and Charles Murray, 
their infamous podcast talking about racial differences and Sam being attacked by Vox Media, Ezra Klein, and mainstream media because of even just airing that conversation. Um, so he says he's scared to even talk about it. And I, I get that. As a non-black person, you don't want be. to talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't want to talk about fucking, yeah. You definitely don't want to talk about that. Um, that's a landmine. Um, you can be you you can get fucked up in the game talking about uh differences, racial differences. Um very much so, yeah. So I I I, I can't knock any person who's not black for not wanting to get involved in that conversation. Yeah, hell yeah. Publicly, I, publicly. Yeah, publicly. There's no real controversy here. If you if you could talk right. old books, right. old encyclopedias and the like, um it's it's set out there that I mean the the idea that I mean the, the races of man evolved over hundreds of thousands of years in different places. The idea that everybody's the same is it's absolutely ludicrous. No, I think everybody can um everybody it's, it believes that people are different, but I think when the brain, they think that the they like to say that the brain is the same. No, no. Um, that's that's the part. We don't have a problem saying that like black people can jump and black people got big dicks and all this shit. No one no one has a problem saying that stuff. It's when it comes to the brain. Wait, I, I had that's a conversation with, with a black friend. Uh I, I was in close proximity with him for about a month. We were together on a work job, and people were concerned that our differences might conflict. And he was kind of upset that I was talking about racial differences. It got brought up, and then uh, he actually watched that uh, that interview with Charles Murray and Sam Harris that he talked about. And then he told me after, like, oh, it turns out that you were right about that. <laughs> Yeah, black people, we know that there's differences. We, black people have more leeway to speak publicly about things. Black people will always talk about, a black comedian will always let you know that white people are different than um, black people 